Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is Ralph Evans and it's my task to call this conference to order and get things started. So if you all please take your places. We are living in an age of, of conferences. All over the world, delegates are gathering in nice hotels and resorts to be addressed by gurus, stars and world leaders. The uh, uh, European leaders seem to move, meet every week to put another band-aid on their crisis. And then there's the World Economic Forum at Davos in Switzerland, which attracts great attention every, every uh, spring. There's T TED, which originally stood for Technology, Entertainment and, and Design. It meets in Long Beach in California and has spawned a whole series of small TEDs around the world. And there are many, many others. And we'll hear during this conference about some ways in which we want to copy some of the things that they do in these, uh, these famous events. But there's a secret which we're all a part of, which is that there's another conference that's maybe less well known, but it's one where real movers and shakers gather together. It's in Singapore, here at the Fullerton Hotel, and it's the Global Supply Chain Business Summit. And I'd like to welcome you all to it. This conference is an opportunity not just to listen to the thought leaders in the field and to drink in their latest ideas, but it's a time to build a network. It's a time to build a little mafia of people in this field. So please take every opportunity you can to build your contacts with the others around who have gathered from all over the world who are in this room, uh, with whom you can maintain contact when you go back to your home base. There really aren't any rules. Uh, except one, keep your mobiles or cell phones on silent. I've got a glass of water down there. Any phone that makes a noise goes in the glass of water to cool it down, uh, just so we won't have any problem with it. But I do encourage you to email or text each other throughout the conference to build up your contacts and build up your, your network, if you will. The contact deals, details for everybody are in your conference packs, the small folders. I'd now like to welcome to the podium in a moment Mr. Ng Hao Yue, who's representing the Minister of State for Trade and Industry, Mr. Theo Sir Luck. Mr. Ng is a graduate of Imperial College London with first class honours in electrical and electronic engineering, and he also has a master's degree in management from the Sloan uh, Fellows Program. Mr. Ng, they refer to in Singapore as 2PS, which is a very prestigious uh, term in Singapore. He's the second permanent secretary to the Minister of State for Trade and Industry. He's been responsible for Singapore's uh, trade and external economic relations, including the negotiation of a number of free trade agreements and participating in regional forums, of which there are quite a few in Southeast Asia and in the World Trade organization. Mr. Ng is also a board member of the Central Provident Fund of Singapore, which is uh, one of the largest uh, uh, pension funds in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I present Mr. Ng Hao Yue. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm here to represent uh, my minister, who unfortunately uh, has to rush to Myanmar for an official trip in the last moment. Uh, and that's, uh, I suppose that's the nature of um, what's happening around the world, where there's fast developments, uh, especially in Asia, and some of our senior leaders have to, at a moment's notice, move to other parts of the world. But um, thank you for your generous words. Uh, I think I should just begin. Eh? Dr. John Gatona, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, very good morning to all of you. It gives me great pressure to join you today for the 2012 Global S Supply Chain Business Summit. In particular, I would like to extend a very big welcome to all those uh, overseas delegates who have made their way to Singapore. Singapore is committed to staying at the forefront of supply chain thought leadership and operations excellence. Therefore, I'm delighted that Singapore has been selected to host this pivotal event and supported by the presence of so many leading practitioners. 
Uh, I was told that the theme of this summit is um, innovation, design thinking, alignment. Uh, hopefully this will spur useful discussions on innovating to stay sustainable amidst the challenges facing global supply chains today. The meeting today is actually being held in interesting times. We face an uncertain global outlook, with growth in the developed economies weighed down by ongoing fiscal consolidation. In Asia, notwithstanding rising domestic demand, growth might be curtailed by sluggish global conditions. Nevertheless, despite the, uncertain, the current uncertainties, Asia is enjoying good growth and the long-term economic outlook for Asia is expected to remain positive. The rise of Asia has also brought about a boom in intra-Asia trade uh, in the last um, four years, from 2007 to 2010. Intra-Asia trade has grown three times, rising from about rising about 30 percent from 1.9 trillion US dollars in 2007 to 2.5 US dollar trillion in 2010. And according to the Boston Consulting Group, Asia is projected to account for about 60 percent of world trade in 2015. This trend looks set to continue as Asia grows from not merely the manufacturing center of the world, but also the largest consumer market in the world. Singapore is at the crossroads of intra-Asian trade and the home base for, in Asia for many leading global companies. And trust we are well positioned to help companies in transforming and optimizing their supply chains in the region. We are at the heart of Southeast Asia and at the nexus of major shipping lanes. This enables us to effectively serve as a hub and conduit for world trade. Singapore is the world's largest container transshipment hub, handling an estimated fifth of world container volumes. And our Changi Airport is among Asia's largest cargo airport, with more than 6,000 flights to 210 destinations in 60 countries every week. And in a recent study on the logistics performance of 155 countries globally, the World Bank ranks Singapore as the top logistics hub in the world. Our position is anchored not just by strong infrastructure and our strategic geographic location, but also by pro-business policies, talent and the presence of world-class service providers. These qualities enable us to respond quickly to new supply chain needs as new business opportunities emerge in Asia. Uh, I thought that one example I could offer of being a friendly regime, friendly regulatory regime is, um, is Singapore Customs. Uh, Ralph gave me quite a very, very generous words about me just now, but I think one thing he did not say was that I was, uh, I was a customs officer for five years. I, I think he may be worried that if I say I'm a customs officer, I'll get a negative reception from this crowd. <laughs> but um, I, I, I think customs authorities are all around the world uh, has certain functions. We, we have to keep goods, keep dangerous goods out, and we have to collect our cut for the government uh, in, in, in terms of custom duties and uh, value added tax. Uh, that, that, that's the same for all of us. Uh, but in Singapore, I hope that uh, in customs, we, we are trying to do this in a business friendly way, in a very facilitative manner, uh, by working with um, the businesses and ensuring that the rules do not actually hinder businesses, do not obstruct businesses. And in my five years in customs, I actually had the pleasure of working with many players, especially many 3PL players, uh, working together on the rules and um, establishing quite good relations between the government and the players. Uh, but since I've left, customs have also been continuing to, to seek to streamline our security regulations and operational procedures. Uh, these are inevitable, but we try to make them as painless as possible. Last year, Customs launched Trade First, which is a new system to enable businesses to streamline their operations and their trade compliance processes. Um, I made Customs as a specific point, but in general, Singapore agencies, uh, both the promotional as well as the regulatory authorities, try to work together to deliver a facilitative environment for legitimate businesses. Such collaborative effort by the authorities to welcome and help investors is one of our key strengths. And I hope it's one significant reason for companies to consider Singapore as their global Asia base. But it's not the regulators who, who make Singapore uh, a key hub. Key to our success as a top logistics hub 
are the many world-class players here. Your companies build up the scale and complexity of the operations and challenge the government here to keep abreast of the latest technological and business developments so that we can level up our regulations and rules as well as our incentives to maintain our leading position. Uh, as a result of the work over the many decades, Singapore is home today to many multinationals, Asia and local logistics players. Many are continuing to do well here. 20 of the top 25 top third-party logistics providers have significant presence in Singapore. Increasingly, many leading third-party logistics service players are locating their critical headquartered activities in Singapore to better capture the growth in Asia. For example, DHL Express has located its mission-critical Asia-Pacific Quality Control Centre in Singapore to manage its complex global network of express shipments. Uh, such increasing sophistication of Singapore's logistics industry also enhances Singapore's attractiveness to manufacturers for supply chain control tower activities. Companies like Dell, Panasonic are managing their complex network from Singapore. Last year, Panasonic announced that it will be relocating its US 57 billion global procurement and logistics headquarters to Singapore. And the Singapore operations will allow Panasonic to optimize and optimize its supply and management of parts and materials. But this is what we have achieved and the, qu the big question is what we can do going ahead. Uh, moving ahead, we will need to seek new areas of growth for the industry in the face of increasing business volatility, supply chain challenges and heightened competition. To do so, we have to help logistics players in Singapore raise their level of competence and sophistication. And this is why we must continuously engage logistics companies to address problems with fresh solutions, to identify new growth opportunities for everyone, as well as to innovate new products. Third-party logistics companies have also invested in higher margin, higher skilled, more specialized logistics services to manage critical spare parts, healthcare or clinical trial samples, as well as complex production logistics. One example is DB Schenker, which recently established its Global Solutions Competence Centre in Singapore to focus on developing production vendor managed inventory solutions for electronics and industrial manufacturing sectors. This centre will be DB Schenker's first global competence centre outside of Europe. Through this and other efforts, we can work together to harness new opportunities across Asia and continue to grow the logistics and supply chain industry here and ultimately to sustain Singapore's position as a leading global logistics hub. Ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude. The theme of this year's summit emphasizes design thinking. With the industry becoming increasing complex and facing multi-faceted challenges, we need a systems thinking approach and an injection of creativity through systems thinking and design thinking to find new opportunities and solutions. I'm actually very interested as a former customs officer and now in the Ministry of Trade in the outcomes of your deliberations in the forum over the next three days. I'm certain there will be lessons for Singapore to take on board as well. And I hope we can continue to learn from one another. Without further ado, let me declare the 2012 Global Supply Chain Business Summit open and wish you all intensive but ultimately fruitful deliberations over the next few days. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ng. Many of us here have been coming to Singapore for decades and we've absolutely marvelled at the progress that this uh, city-state has made over that time. And uh, uh, I think we've seen a track record here that makes those ambitions that Mr. Ng talked about for the future quite credible. It will continue. Now it's time for me to introduce the chief guru and inspiration of this conference, Dr. John Gatorna who will set out the theme for the next two days. Uh, I think most of you know about John's uh, background. You can see his bio in the conference pack. Suffice to say that he's a global thought leader in the supply chain field. He's the author of numerous books and articles. He's a professor at several universities and he's an advisor to many companies. Dr. Katorna.
Thanks, Ralph. And thank you to 2PS for those words of welcome and uh, to give us some background to Singapore. Um, when we were sitting in a bar somewhere, I think I was with Roddy Martin about two years ago, and we were talking about this idea of uh, pulling together a community. It's really an excuse to get all our friends and colleagues together. That's what it is. Um, and, and a very, very good group we've got out there. Uh, we were thinking of a couple of things. Um, where should we hold this? And um, we finally came up with the idea of Singapore because Singapore is about the only place in the world that I know of that you can pretty much, probably with the exception of Brazil and one or two other places like that, you can get to with one flight. You can even get from New York to Singapore in, in a non-stop non -stop flight. So we thought, let's make it easy for people to come here and uh, no excuses. Dragging them down to Australia is just one step too far, uh, but here would be great. And I think, listening to 2PS as well, uh, you can see that this, uh, this city-state has really come on in the last 45 years and uh, it's just the ideal location. The second thing, of course, was then, well, where shall we have it? What hotel? Because, again, anyone who's been to Singapore will know that it's got the most fabulous hotels in the world. Uh, so it was quite a difficult choice. But we wanted something that was iconic Singapore. And really, this building here is, is iconic Singapore. It's, uh, it was a government building, it was a colonial a building in the early days, um, it was a seat of government and administration, and more recently it was a post office. And then of course it was then rejuvenated uh, into this wonderful hotel. So I hope that you do in the next course of the next few days really enjoy the hotel itself. And I spoke to the chief executive of the hotel yesterday, Giovanni Vitorali, who's Italian of course, and uh, complimented him on the wonderful staff he's got here. And I'm sure that you're going to find that the staff here are just so respectful and so courteous that it's going to make your stay uh, very enjoyable. However, I wanted to say a few words about the theme because, again, uh, it took us a long time to come up with this, this idea of what should the theme be that pulls us all together and, and generates the, the sessions and the ideas. And we came up eventually with the idea of innovation, design thinking, and alignment. And um, before I get to just say a little bit more about those words, uh, let me just step back a bit and just build on some of the words of 2PS. Um, there's no doubt about it, we all know how volatile the world is. Um, and that volatility really affects our supply chains and our logistics networks. Um, there's a lot of unrest amongst our consumers and our users. They're moving. Some of them have got their hands in their pockets. Some of them are changing their, their preferences. And that all impacts on us in the supply chain. Um, the banking business model is broken. Um, it almost brought our supply chains to a standstill in 2008 when credit uh, became very tight. And it might well happen again the way things are, are going. And, and I think that the problem is, for us, is that our field is only around about 40, 45 years old. It, the first article that was published on distribution management in Harvard Business Review was in 1965. And really, logistics had been around for thousands of years, but as a scientific field of management, it's not been around for that long. And the problem is, for the last 45, 50 years, we've been using the same design techniques. And what we've done is we've designed static supply chains. One size fits all. And that served us quite well during a period of growth and stability in the post-war period. But it just doesn't work any longer. It's flawed. And you know, now's the time, and I know there's some companies in this room who are already moving on this to get away from this idea of, of designing our supply chains from the inside out and changing the perspective 180 degrees and designing our supply chains from the outside in so that we understand more the users and consumers of our efforts and can develop and engineer, reverse engineer, if you like, the uh, configurations inside. And so we've got to change and to do this successfully We've got to um, embrace innovation.
because most of us start with what we've got. Um, if you look at the uh, AMR Gartner top 25 global supply chains in the world, you'll find that at least half of those did not exist 30 years ago. People like Dell and Cisco and others. And that's one of the reasons that they've done so well. They started with a, a blank piece of paper and they've been able to carefully architect what they want to do. But most of us don't have that luxury. We've got people here from Shell, we've got people here from you know, companies like others. I mean, Dell, of course, had a blank sheet of paper as well. Um, and those companies, those old bricks and mortar companies, have got a massive problem to transform, not only to architect what they want to do, but also to, to actually get the people to do it. And I'm delighted to have Pat McLagan here from the US. Uh, she's doing some really interesting things in, in helping us make that transition from strategy, which is what we're trying to do, to down to the execution level uh, with some of the new work she's doing in Gold Streams. So um, we have to focus on, on the world of, of changing consumers in a, a world that's very volatile, and for that we need a, a, a dynamic uh, configuration or a number of configurations that will drive our goods through that. And that's going to involve not only the processes and technologies, it's going to involve getting into where all the forces of darkness really exist, which is amongst our people. And it's fascinating to me how, you know, all around the universities of the world that teach this subject and even in training sessions inside companies, no one wants to talk about the, the C for culture. No one wants to know about it because it's, it's, too, it's too frightening. And yet we've got to grapple with this change of culture if we want to get our supply chains working. In fact, we have to really change the whole way we work. We need new organisation designs. And that's why, you know, I came to the conclusion a few years ago that really businesses like yours are just aggregations of supply chains running through them. It's like the central nervous system of, uh, of the enterprise. And that's why I'm delighted that we've got so many CEOs here because we wanted to make this a business conference, not a specialist supply chain conference. And if we embrace this understanding of what the consumer is telling us, how we connect with the consumer, uh, how we uh, re-engineer our organisational culture, how do we select leaders that will do this, then we are really embracing the idea of a truly integrated model. Because no one, I can tell you at the moment, no one has a fully integrated model. People talk about it, but no one has it because we've only got half the model at the moment and that's all about the technology stuff and the, see that you can, the stuff that you can see. So I thought this little diagram here, I'm only using the one slide, I encouraged all our panellists to come to have a conversation. We don't want to have a lecture. Um, and so all our panels, and we've got 10 wonderful panels on 10 really interesting topics over the next few days to generate, starting off this idea of the knowledge funnel, and at the top of that funnel, this is part of um, a professor in, in Canada, Roger Martin, who wrote a book uh, called uh, The Design of Business. And he produced this diagram, and at the top there you see this jumble, um, and that's really about where we are today here. We're exploring innovation. We're exploring the mysteries, and nothing is off the table. We're, we're going to look at anything that, that moves. And uh, it is complex and, it's, and what we have to do is start off with that complexity and then as we move down through the course of our various panels over the next few days, uh, we'll move down to the heuristic level where we'll start to sort out some of these innovations. We'll start to talk about models that will help us focus some of the things that we've learnt about up there in the top level and get to understand better. And then as we come further down to the lowest level, the algorithm level, that's where we need work like Pat McLagan's work, where we, we have algorithms that will help us embed um, core practices in, in our businesses that are repetitive and which are, are cost effective. But you, you can see the flow. We've got to start up the top because if you try to go in at the bottom and put in best practices and core practices without architecting or coming up with the better ideas above that, you'll fall short. So that's the idea. Um, we've got 
a wonderful range of panels, some fantastic, I think around about 60 panellists from all over the world, some of them who didn't meet till this morning. Um, a lot of them have talked to each other on the telephone and had teleconferences and I've seen a lot of email traffic. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to a wonderful three days of conversation and I do thank you all for making the trip here and I hope that you're going to find it very, very beneficial. Thank you very much.